and came back. And they came back with, you know, big frilly hairdos and lots of colorful clothing and, um, you know, sparkly eyes and like that. And so I said, something's going on here and I want to check this out. So I got a very strong urge to go. And I did. I quit my job, packed up all my stuff and got a car somehow or other and drove out to the West Coast. And I wound up living in an apartment like three blocks from the Hare Krishna temple. And of course, all the hippies were going to the temple and taking prasadam and especially Sunday feast and the Rathyatra festivals and like that. And I was involved in all of that. That's when I first actually met devotees. I met Jayananda, I met you know, Jayatirtha, Vishnu John, Tamal Krishna, um, all those devotees at a very early stage. And I remember thinking, because I was making the rounds of all of the spiritual groups, uh, going to all the gurus. And I had some friends who knew some of these gurus quite well. Um, one friend, Bob Schneff, who used to make the posters for Avalon and, and Fillmore and other and bands and stuff like that. He hosted Yogi Bhajan when, when Yogi Bhajan first came to the U.S. And uh, I knew some people who knew Muktananda. I knew some people who knew Kirpal Singh, um, some of the other big yoga teachers. And, and uh, so I used to make the rounds of all those classes. Guru Maharaj Ji, who you never hear of anymore, but he was big at the time. And of course, TM and all that. I, I couldn't find anything in any of them. Huh? Uh, I started reading Srila Prabhupada's books, and I had a lot of respect for Srila Prabhupada. I'll tell you why. He was the only one of all the yogis, all the teachers from India, who was giving the original texts. Everybody else was talking about the Vedas, but he was the only one who was actually presenting the Devanagari and the transliteration and the translations of the original texts. Huh? Everybody else was giving their opinions. Oh, I think this about the Vedas. I think that about the Vedas. Vedas say this. Vedas say that. He was the only one who was quoting Vedas. And I found that very impressive. But I couldn't, I couldn't get myself to become a devotee. I was attached to being a musician. Uh, I, was, I was not real successful, but I was successful at it. Uh, artistically and uh, even to a certain extent financially. And I could pretty much do whatever I wanted to do, which was nice. But I couldn't see giving up the life of a musician for the life of a devotee. For one thing, the devotees seemed very strict. And another thing which I admired, they were very pure. But I didn't think I could live like that. I was still attached to drugs and illicit sex and all that. And also I have to admit the stature, the, the ego of being a musician. So. I should back, to, back up a little bit. Uh, at this time, I started doing some experiments with sound vibration, trying to answer my question. How does music affect people? How does music give us feelings? So I started doing some sort of secret life of plants experiments with different kinds of music and measuring the growth rate of plants and like that. And long story short, I found out that Indian music and particularly Vedic chants were the best kind of music for all kinds of living entities. And so uh, I just said, I'm going to learn this stuff. And I went to the best teacher at the time, who was Ali Akbar Khan. And Ali Akbar Khan happened to be teaching right near where some friends of mine lived that I was in a band with. And so I used to go there and hang out. I wasn't exactly a uh, an official student, but I hung out, went to the classes, I knew a lot of the people and jammed with them and started learning the music. So one thing led to another. And one day I met with Khan Sahab and I asked him my question. How does music affect people? How, does pe how do people feel emotions through music? And I expected him to give me some kind of obfuscation or some kind of roundabout explanation that led nowhere. 
And he said, oh yes, that is the science of rasa and raga. Just like that, with perfect confidence. Huh? And I said, well, how do I learn that? Oh, you must study the um, Bharatnatya Shastra. Bharatnatya Shastra. Um, and I looked it up and sure enough, there was an English translation or two available and I got it. And it talked all about ragas and intervals and scales and vibrations and how this represented different emotions due to the vibrations of energy and how relationships followed those same patterns of energy. And that's why people have emotions when they get into relationships and those same relationships and same relative um, vibrations are there in the structure of music. Huh? And the same mathematics that's in those structure of those vibrations is also the structure behind the atomic structure of matter and so on and so on and so on. It's very deep. <laughs> so I said, wow, this is a real thing. So I started studying more with Ali Akbar. And I was very interested and I kept coming back to this idea of how do I uh, communicate or influence people to feel certain emotions with different kinds of music. And one thing led to another and I got really deep into the whole thing. And one day I asked Kansahab, well, what if I really wanted to study this? You know, he, he kept saying, well, this is very spiritual. This is very spiritual. And there was one, oh, one other authority who I studied, um, another Khan. What was his name? Not Bishmala Khan. Um, I can't remember. But he had like a nine volume series on just this subject. The sound vibrations and the, and the whole thing. Um, Hazrat, Inayat Hazrat Khan. Inayat, Inayat Hazrat Khan. He's not well known. He's very esoteric. But his writings were exactly on this subject and he had voluminous works on it and so i really got into this but he was in india and i wasn't ready to go to india um, so i asked kansa i said if i want to study this spiritual aspect of sound vibration then you know who can teach me where can i go and he said oh you have to go to swami Prabhupada. he knows so then I started going back to the temple again with a renewed determination uh, to study. And the devotees didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> they were like, huh, what? <laughs> and I'll get back to this because it's a very important point. Remind me if I forget, okay? The devotees didn't know actually what their own spiritual master was teaching. All they knew is, well, we have this kind of sort of religious process. We do these mantras and these chants, and we get up at this time in the morning, and we take a shower, and we do this ritual and that ritual, uh, and then we go out and chant on the streets, and it makes us feel good. Well, okay, but how does it work? Well, we don't know. It's just the name of God. and, and all that. They couldn't really explain to me, how does this work? So... I tried to meet Prabhupada and all that, but it was very difficult. You had to be either somebody high up in their organization or a big donor or something like that. Uh, so I got to see Prabhupada, you know, give class and a couple of times got to see him at the Rath Yatra. Now those Rath Yatras were amazing experiences. But I still couldn't become a devotee. I still didn't identify with the devotee association. So more years went by and I was traveling around still trying to understand music and working as a musician. And I remember it very clearly like it was yesterday. One night I was playing with this jazz band, a really good jazz band, Clarence Palmer's All Stars <laughs> in uh, Florida near you know, Disney World and all that. And uh, we were playing in this nightclub and it was a six nights a week job, which is very rare for a jazz musician. Uh, but uh, we were good. The band swung. I was the only white guy in the band, as usual. And uh, 
We got to the end of the of the night. One night, it's like closing time, 2 a.m. And you know, there's one guy just passed out on the table, and, <laughs> and there's these other this couple smooching in the corner, both of them holding lit cigarettes. And and I just looked around at the whole scene, and and I went, I can't do this anymore. I I cannot do this anymore. So what am I going to do? I know. I'll go down to Miami and join the Hare Krishnas. <laughs> so I wound up everything in Orlando and I packed up my car and I went down and found the temple and joined the Hare Krishnas. That's quite the story. <laughs> Epic cast of thousands, right? <laughs> you mentioned that uh, you did a, a lot of reading on 